So I know I said I was taking a few days off to like get lighting and everything figured out. And I did not do that. It's been a really weird week. So many things going on with the kids, lots of activities, lots of extracurriculars. They had auditions. It was wild. Mr. Soap and Clay just started working like from home right now. And that's been weird too, because he sits just right across from me. It's a back-to-back -back setup. It's very cool, but you know, he's on meetings and stuff. And so I can't really come mess around and start fiddling with lights and whatnot when he's doing that. So point is that didn't happen, but I did have one of the Sudzers reach out in discord, the owner of, of Sue's soap creations. So, you know, it's Sue and offered to assist with the lighting thing. She's also a photographer, which is amazing. And so I sent her some pictures of the office and she sent me some sketches back and I'm super excited to like implement them. But for now, you're gonna deal with me just having hung a, a blanket over the big wall so it's not overly exposed and, you know, kind of just sitting here mostly in the dark, hoping the lighting is okay. But I couldn't be gone for too terribly long because I miss you guys whenever I'm gone. And that's true. And also sounds like a song. But anyway, as usual, that has nothing whatsoever to do with what we are making today. I just was giving you an update because I've been gone for a few days and it's been crazy. I will tell you what we are doing today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you were here for week 17 of year three. And this week, I know I said I was going to do either Project Soapway winners or the color video series thing, but we're not doing either one of those because the aforementioned it's been a week has meant that I can only really do small edits and really just kind of stream of consciousness type stuff. So it's more of an FAQ kind of informal week wherein I am doing some fun stuff and showing you some cool tests that I've been personally playing with, as well as answering some questions that I see pop up in the Discord and on the YouTube comments and just in general forums, you know, all around. And so we are actually starting out with something that one of my friends slash, you know, soap customers asked me to do about a month or so ago, if not longer at this point. Sorry about it, Joe super sorry. But he actually texted me and asked if I could make him another batch of soap, a custom loaf, and dupe the Prorasso red scent. Now, I figured this is a pretty good time to actually talk about how to dupe scents generally. Because I'm sure you were in business for exactly 12 seconds before you got your first request to dupe a scent from someone else. All of the time, people are asking me to dupe scents, and it's been like that forever. And I kind of understand it because if you like the product, like you like the soap, but you really are in love with this other scent, you will some of the time sacrifice your, you know, skin and the, and the quality in order to just to get the scent because it makes you happy. And so I started duping scents at a really early point in my business. But yeah, I sort of realized that we haven't really talked about, you know, duplicating fragrances and what your options really are. And so that's what we're going to talk about today in the video while I make a dupe of the Prorasso Red. Again, just the scent, not the actual soap itself. But if you would like a dupe of the Prorasso Red shaving cream that I show you, shave soap, we can do that too. Just like let me know in the comments. But anyway, let's get to the pouring and we will talk about how I have duplicated fragrances and your options out there and, you know, ways you can duplicate everybody's favorite fragrance, whatever that may be. Wow, that was so awkward. Oh, 
Okay, so as I said, today we are duping the scent from the Parasso Red. And like I said before, there are lots of different options for this, and it really kind of depends on whether or not you trust your nose, or whether you are a newbie, or, you know, a longtime soap maker, or you just don't want to play and experiment and have fun. You know, so we're going to kind of talk about all of them. First thing that I do whenever I am, you know, looking to duplicate a scent that someone has requested is I go to the Googles and I just type in, you know, in this case, Parasso Red smells like. And then I read that. I read the scent descriptions. And I mean, first up we have, it's very similar to the Art of Shaving Sandalwood fragrance. Okay. All right. Cool. That's good to know. Also, it says at uh, fragrantica.com, Parasso Red after shave Parasso for men is a very soft, powdery sandalwood warm scent okay so that's where you start right we have we have stuff to work with so what you could do is then go to your suppliers sites and obviously after just double checking to see if they don't already have a dupe for it so you can find that kind of all over unfortunately with the fragrance sites some of them have it you know like a type so nature's garden for example has them set up as a type so does sierra candles I don't know that either one of them have a separate section for that, but if you just kind of search type, you can find the list of what they have. And then like places like Wellington and whatnot, basically their whole brand is dupes as far as I'm concerned. And so you can just search by the name itself and you should be able to come up with something. But you know that you have two avenues in this case because you have the Parasso and also the Art of Shavings, you know, stuff. So you might be able to get a good hit on either one. Let's assume you can't. What you would then do is go towards the sandalwoods and look up the descriptions and the scent notes for your sandalwoods because we know that this is going to be a sandalwood scent, right? It's going to have a powdery feel. It's going to be warm. Look for those same indicators in the description of the scent. It's going to get you very close. So that's one way to do it, right? And this is really helpful if you don't have the actual, you know, example the set the scent on hand as i do with this parasso red so it's a good idea to first and foremost trust the descriptions look for the scent notes and pay attention to them and where they sort of line up as far as the top the middle or the base notes base notes are going to be sandalwoods almost 100 percent of the time and every company has a lot of sandalwood options Okay, so assuming options one slash two, so, you know, looking at scent descriptions and or just seeing if there's already a dupe that's been made by a company is not appealing to you. Um, and you do have a sample of the product in front of you in question, trust your nose. Now, this is not something that most new soap makers are really good at because I think they still sort of assume that there are nine million different scents out there and there's no way that you could ever possibly dupe them just by smelling them. It's not the case. As you continue to do more soap batches, you will recognize that a lot of them smell exactly the same. There are, a, there's only so many different types of scents that you can reasonably pick up when you are smelling a bar or a product, right? And so you're going to start picking up on those. Now, for this particular example, I, I've always had an amazing sense of smell ever since my first pregnancy. So thank you. Soap and clay kidlet number one, but two, as soon as I smelled this, I knew exactly what it was. And I didn't even bother looking at scent descriptions or looking at any company to see if there was a scent dupe out there because I already knew that it was going to be closest to sacred sandalwood from nature's garden. Sacred sandalwood, by the way, is a delightful scent. And I always, always have it in stock. And if Sierra Candles made it, I would totally, you know, buy it from them all the time. But it's one of the few that I still go to Nature's Garden for these days. But Sacred Sandalwood, delightful scent. It, are, it already checks all the boxes because when you smell it, you have the nice sandalwood, but then you also have the nice powdery dry down as well. But I knew that that wasn't going to be a dead on dupe. So knowing that after smelling it, just picking it up off of my shelf, I went, yeah, this is good but it needs to be blended with something else, right? And so the way that I do it these days is literally just taking both the bottles and opening them up and shoving them, you know, in front of my, my face. 
but you can be more precise when it's a more complex fragrance and you start working with drops. And so it's a piece of paper that you put like three drops of sandalwood on, of the, the sacred sandalwood, and then a drop of something else. Continuing to blend because that actually helps you keep track of how much you've put into everything, right? If you have three drops, that's three drops of sacred sandalwood and one drop of Indian sandalwood. That's 75% sacred sandalwood, 25% Indian sandalwood, three to one, four parts. You get it. And that's actually what this one ended up being was 75% sacred sandalwood and 25% Indian sandalwood, both from nature's garden, because you did need a little bit more of that bite, that clean soap smell that comes from the Indian sandalwood that sort of gets lost in the sacred sandalwood because the sacred sandalwood itself, it's more of a perfumey cologne type blend. Absolutely delightful, but it needed a little bit more clean notes. And so when I did that, and I just, again, I just took the two bottles and smelled them together, smelled it against the Parasso Red and went, yep, that's exactly it. And it was as easy as that. But this particular client actually knows full well because we have had these, you know, instances where he has been in my shop and I've just been adding a drop of this or a drop of that while he's trying to find his perfect blend. And I'm just taking notes of everything that I've added. Sometimes it can get complicated with that. But you're going to be pretty close with your initial opinion of your of the scent. And so, again, if it's sandalwood, you are not going to go in there and start pl pulling florals. That's not going to be the first thing that you pull off the shelf, right? You've already limited it to the musky, woodsy type tones. So we're talking sandalwood and cedarwood and just the really kind of earthy, musky tones that's where you're going to gravitate to. doesn't make sense to, pour, to pull a peppermint off the shelf if you don't smell a hint of peppermint. And so trusting your nose is another way to, you know, do this. Okay, and the final option with all of this, assuming you looked and there are no scent dupes that you can find at any of your, you know, go-to fragrance companies, assuming that you don't have anything in your stock that smells like the thing. You can't figure it out based on the fragrance notes. The next step would be to actually reach out to your fragrance companies. And I am not saying that they are all going to do this for you. Oh my God. Can we just stop and take a minute and, and look at my pointy layers? The, the design brief was to make it look like the Italian flag, right? So the green and the white and the red. And so that's great, fine, cool. It'll cure down to be proper colors with the green and the red. But I decided to not make it like a straight line. I wanted to make pointy layers. And I don't know, if this particular client doesn't like it, I'll make him some straight layers. But this is what I wanted to do and it was pretty. It's like a waving flag, it's cool. And those pointy layers are amazing. I've been playing with these things for like well over a year and I swear this is my favorite, favorite batch that I've ever cut into. I am so in love. Wow. 10 out of 10. Anyway, so I'm not saying that the companies that you reach out to are immediately going to, you know, make a dupe for you or not charge you for it because usually they are going to charge you for it and sometimes they won't even respond to you. But if you are one person reaching out to Nature's Garden saying, hey, do you have a dupe or can you make a dupe of Parasso Red? A, you might get the information from them saying, actually, the this scent here, the sacred sandalwood that we have is pretty close, so you should try that. Or two, they're keeping a file. This is a business that wants to stay in business, and if there are a lot of people that are messaging them about the same scent over and over again, eventually they're going to make it and put it in their line. There are other you know, instances where Sierra Candles, for example, they do amazing dupes, and I would still love to have Dana on here and talk about her fragrance making process like with you guys like do an interview so Dana if you're listening to this one let me know let me know I'd love to do it but I reached out to Dana oh gosh back during like Christmas time asking if she had a dupe to this scent that I make for a wholesale account that she doesn't that I couldn't find anywhere on her site and I expected it to be yeah I mean we can make it and it will be you know X amount of doll hairs and you have to buy X number of, you know, pounds of it or whatever. Kind of typical standard agreements if I'm just asking them to make it. I have to pay for it. That makes sense. With Dana, though, in this particular instance, 
She sent it to her fragrance people, and they did all the cool sciencey stuff, and they made it, and she decided to stock it. And so now I can get it all of the time, whenever I want, just by you know going to her site, and it's amazing. It's very very cool. But I guess the the lesson to all of that is don't be afraid to pick up the phone, give them a call, send an email. They have the information to their fragrances that maybe you don't have, and also they do have you know. Perfumeries, perfumers, those people that they go to to make all of this, or on staff to make all of these things. And so again, I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to get it made every time, but reaching out to your fragrance companies is going to get them in the you know right place to start making this, so it can be easy for you. Does that make sense? And there it is, some tips and tricks on how to duplicate a fragrance. And yeah, you're kind of left with. I don't know, maybe four big options. First and foremost is obviously look at your fragrance companies and see if they've already made a dupe for it. It's easy enough. But if you're striking out and you can't find the dupe, then look to the scent notes on the you know actual fragrance in question and look in multiple places, right? Like look across obviously not just the website where you can find it, but different places wherein they're talking about perfumery notes and. Pay attention to that. Write that down. In this case, again, it's sandalwood with a powdery finish, and then it also has a little bit of musk. Cool. Those are hits that you can now, you know, look through when you are going to your fragrance sites and looking at their scents. And as I said, like in this particular instance, you're going to go to your favorite fragrance supplier and put in sandalwood. You're not looking in lavender for, you know, this particular blend. You're not going to find those notes there. And of course, the other option is if you don't. Want to buy anything? You can go to your existing fragrances again. Still check the scent notes or whatever, or just do some experimenting. Have some fun with it. You can be very, very precise, as I was, you know, talking to you about with like the drops and everything to measure out a formula, so I knew that I would have it for later. Or you can just stick bottles up to your nose and call it good. Either way, it's experimenting and it's a lot of fun. And you might get reintroduced to some of your scents that have been at the back of your cabinet for a while and you haven't played with. So there's a bonus as well. Also, do keep in mind that you can hit up your fragrance supply companies and ask them if they have a dupe, or if they're planning on making a dupe, or if they would be willing to make a dupe of whatever scent you are asking for. Now, again, I can't guarantee that they're going to do that for you every single time, but it never hurts to ask. The worst they can say is no. Now, for me, Sierra Candles, Dana is amazing, and. I was able to reach out to her, and she not only duped a scent, but she also started stocking it in her, you know, line, so I can easily pick it up. Which is not going to be the case all of the time. So do keep that in mind. You need to keep your expectations reasonable with these companies. So that means expect that they might charge you for it if they do a custom dupe. Expect that they could say no, and expect that you know maybe again you get nowhere with it. But again, it never hurts to just reach out and communicate for sure. And for the Dana thing, I would love to have her on the channel and actually do an interview on how they create their fragrances because it is a fascinating process and obviously going to be much more involved than what I do, you know. But anyway, I hope that you guys had a good time with that. If you are at all interested in duping the Parasa Red, you can do that. I told you how to in the video. And again, as I said, if you want me to dupe the actual shave soap, let me know. I'm happy to do that too. That one would be a fun one. But. I am gonna go because I actually have lots and lots of stuff left to do yet today. And Mister literally just pulled up with the kidlets, and so I need to go say hi to them and see how their day was because I haven't seen them in a few hours. But thank you for existing and for being you and for being awesome. An extra special thank you to the Sudzers. It is currently at time of recording, March thirtieth. I hope I get this out tonight. So you have tomorrow. Project Soapway submissions are due tomorrow, so on the thirty-first, assuming you see this. On the thirtieth, but Project Soapway submissions are due on the thirty-first. Is the point? So don't forget, they're coming in like a stampede. So I'm going to go. Thank you again for everything. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of testing Project Soapy Fun. Bye.